Hi, my name is Laura Vernon. I am Provost Fellow for Student Mental Health here at FAU, and I am also a Professor of Psychology in the Wilkes Honors College. And I am joined today by two of my favorite alums to talk about issues near and dear to my heart, mental health, right? And so I want to introduce David and Daniela. Hi, thank you so much Hi, for having thank us. Thank you for having us. Uh, I'm David Gorski. I am a uh, alum of the FAU Honors College. I graduated in 2019. Um, and since then, I've uh, started a company, Life Metrics. Um, and I am pursuing my PhD in physics at the University of Pittsburgh starting uh, this fall. I am Daniela Gersonalger, and I'm an alum, an alum <laughs> from the College of Science. I graduated. Uh, May of 2018 with my bachelor's in biology and I started my master's in health administration in College of Business fall of 2018. Um, I met David um, during uh, the business plan competition where he entered life metrics and uh, I joined since then. Yeah, so you both have been very successful in business competitions and designing life metrics and I know you're in the process now of sort of testing and refining it so I guess first off tell us a little bit about life metrics what is it sure so life metrics is a uh, mobile app that you answer a few daily questions about yourself and we combine that with data that's already on your device like uh, call histories and uh, if you have a wearable any heart rate or step counts and things like that and we use machine learning to analyze this and try to find the most important correlations and patterns in your life so that you can kind of figure out um, what is really affecting how you feel uh, both physically, but we're really focusing on uh, the psychological aspect of that and bringing uh, uh, more awareness and self-awareness to mental health. So you're talking about, you're talking about wearables. So like you can integrate my, Fitbit data, for example, with other, with my self-report of how much caffeine I'm drinking or that kind of thing. Is that what you mean? It, it, that's exactly it. Um, for example, you can see how step count affects your um, subjective sleep quality measurement, right? So we track how you say that you slept and we track your step count. And then you can see, you know, is there a correlation between you meeting that, you know, typically stated 10,000 step goal and actually sleeping better or you know, is there, is there a more complex relationship going on? I would find that so helpful because I find myself often at the end of the day, either feeling like I was magically productive and happy and energetic, and I'm not sure why, or like I was anxious and unproductive and like sort of, uh, you know, like a rat running on a wheel and I'm not sure why. And so often, some of the most important things about how my day went, I feel like I'm making guesses about why was that? That did I have a good day because I got up and went running in the morning? Well, some days I feel like then I run out of energy by the end of the day. And so was that my run's fault or was that my nutrition's fault or was that something else entirely? And so having, having an app that helps me think through that would be a really nice thing. So what, what kinds of things does the app track? What kinds of options do people have? So we're really trying to have it be as broad as possible. Um, so we're tracking uh, basically everything that Apple Health allows us to track in terms of health and physical health markers. Um, but we're also working on building out a whole database of uh, questions and psychological uh, measurements that we can use to measure um, you know, psychological well-being and uh, how you're feeling and, uh, sorry, my cat's walking through here. Uh, <laughs> and, um, and just different things about your day. Uh, and, and we're talking to people all the time about, you know, what they find important and what they find actually has an impact on their day. But we're also trying to help people figure out things that maybe they didn't think had an impact on their day, but end up actually affecting them a lot. Most of them are just simple questions, uh, just to prompt you to think about the average things you think you do every day, but actually have an impact on how you feel 
and your energy levels and everything else. So like, have you been eating starches or did you go out for a run or just simple questions? It's not like very. Yeah. The, the idea is that it's really quick and painless. Um, people hate answering long uh, okay. questionnaires yeah. um, and you know, navigating through menus. Uh, we did, you know, over a hundred interviews through the core of, the course of uh, developing so far and unanimously almost uh, everybody has tried one of these apps, um, you know, that, uh, that keeps track of their physical health, but they just get bored because it's just so tedious to enter stuff in. Right. Yeah. So I know, you know, the, some of it is, is the stuff that your mom always told you, right? So it's physical activity, it's sleep, it's nutrition and eating. Right. And then also looking at things like, sort of psychological types of symptoms like anxiety or depression, things like mood. Um, and so that, yeah, that would be nice to sort of have a, a running, a running data set on for each of us so that we could have some insight. So how did you, how did you come up with this? How did you get started doing this? So uh, it actually started because I was gifted an Apple watch uh, and I thought it was so cool. Uh, for the first uh, few weeks, I was using it every day. I'm like logging all my workouts. I'm looking at my heart rate, like, oh my God, check this out. Like my heart rate, uh, my heart rate was like a uh, average of like uh, 97 during that workout. I got to work harder or something. <laughs> but, you know, after, uh, after about like only two weeks or something like that, I realized um, no it's way. basically <laughs> useless. Yeah. It doesn't really matter what my average heart rate was last Tuesday. Um, but coming from uh, a physics background, I knew that uh, there's a lot of, you know, data analysis we could actually do on this and we could start figuring some of this, you know, what this actually means. Um, and at the same time, I was in a uh, course of uh, social entrepreneurship actually on at the uh, honors college. And so uh, I threw out my original plan for that class. Uh, I asked uh, Dr. Strain and uh, Dr. Stegenga uh, like, hey, can I just scrap and, you know, restart with this crazy idea I have? Um, and they were, you know, very supportive of it. And um, that's kind of where it started. That is cool. And I know since then, you've been pretty successful in competitions with Tech Runway. Tell us about that. Sure. So uh, after, after that uh, course, I actually applied for the uh, Keenan scholarship that goes along with the uh, social entrepreneurship course. And um, I was able to win that. And then um, they helped, uh, you know, coach me and guide me. And uh, ultimately, uh, I ended up placing first at the um, business plan competition in 2019 at FAU. Um, and then uh, from there, Daniela joined. And uh, that summer, we participated through Tech Runway uh, in the iCourse program, the regional program. Uh, which is consists of just having a customer discovery interviews to see what people expect from your product and how you can change it uh, to fit better with their needs. Um, so we did that over the summer, we graduated and we just kept working on it uh, for a few more months. And just recently we were <clears throat> sorry, accepted to the Venture Aid Program um, class for Tech Runway. So it has a cash prize and um, just different benefits for, for us. So yeah. it'll just help us keep working towards yeah, it. So we're really excited about just getting the opportunity to work more with FAU uh, and they've been very supportive in, um, in helping us so far. Well, congratulations. That's also the result of all of your hard work. That's quite an honor and quite an accomplishment. So I'm really pleased for you. So if, so if someone is listening to this and thinking that they might want to use this, like what's involved? What do they need? Like, do they need a smartwatch? Do they need some of these other wearables? Do they, you know, obviously they need a smartphone or somewhere to have the app. How do they use it? Can they, can they start using it now? Yeah, so definitely. You don't need a wearable um, because your phone also collects data. So, but if you have one, it can integrate with it. Um, currently, our app is only good for um, iOS devices, so iPhones. Um, eventually, we'll have the Android app as well. Uh, but you can start using it, definitely. Uh, you can go onto the website, it's um, lifemetrics.io, and you can sign up for the beta. Um, our plan is to launch it at some point um, towards the end of May, maybe even early June, uh, but definitely you can start using it. Um, and in the 
beta phase, um, you can submit feedback. Um, if you'd like to see something else that you, you think it's missing or you mm -hmm. don't like something, you definitely have the chance to, to let us know so we can um, serve you best. Yeah, well, so far we've gotten uh, very positive feedback from the people that have been uh, beta testing our app. Um, you know, it kind of went from something that's just very, um, you know, bare bones and we've been slowly building more and more on top of it. And uh, we've been taking people's feedback as it comes, um, not just only, um, you know, like bugs and things that they find, but also, um, you know, hey, this question could be worded better or I'm you know, I want to track this, or maybe this uh, question is a bit awkward and, and things like that. We've been all, taking all of that into consideration. So this is a real opportunity, it sounds like. So if people, if people get involved now and start playing around with it and they see things that they would like it to measure, there's a chance that you will actually change that in the app and add it. And so they have a chance to kind of get what they need out of this app because this app is still being developed and yeah. still moving yeah. forward. It's probably the best time to join if you're really looking for something. Like if you've tried other apps uh, and you, you definitely feel like, oh, I wish I could tell them to please add this because I really want it and it's not there. Um, this is perfect, the, the, the perfect time to join because we can't yeah. just do that. Um, We're really just trying to build something that people find valuable and that actually helps them, right? This started as a social venture from um, that, that course. And so it's really important that we build something that, you know, um, helps people at the end of the day and that conforms to you know what they expect and uh, also right now actually all beta testers are going to get a, a year of uh, premium when we launch uh, our premium service as well so just oh nice that. so that's so they can not only get in at the ground and influence it but then they have a extra reward for getting in at this stage that they get they get access for a whole extra year yeah exactly nice i'm in <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's fantastic. Is there anything else that we need to know about the app or about you or about how to get involved? Um, so we've... Um, There's probably know. like two things. And, yeah. and we, we get asked this question a lot, like there's a bunch of wellness apps, you know, what, what's different about this app? Why should people um, stop using whatever it is they're using to track whatever else they track um, and then choose life metrics over it? Uh, and so the, what we discovered with the interviews is like you have um, the app where you track your food, you have the app where you track the exercise because it's usually like um, if you have a Fitbit, for example, you'll use the Fitbit app. Um, you'll just have kind of your information scattered around different apps. And so one thing is that you can just have everything in Life Metrics and uh, have it analyzed somehow because then you end up with like, okay, my information is in five different apps and I still don't know anything about it. Uh, so you can have all in one. So that's one thing. And the second thing um, is, which this is useful for students as well, is if you are going to therapy or if you don't know if you should be going to therapy or um, if you're already going and want to make it better, um, we're planning on having like a therapy assistant part of the app mm -hmm. where people, um, you can either choose to go to therapy because the information that you're getting from the app, the analysis, you seem like, it seems like you just need someone to help you go over it. But also if you're already going, you can have uh, your therapist um, add some questionnaires so you can keep track of very specific things that you're not mm -hmm. really sure of. Like, so you'll show up to your appointment and, oh, have you been having trouble sleeping? Oh, well, I think last week maybe. So to actually provide some thorough um, analysis or information yeah. to So your they provider. can see that data right there. Um, and kind of have a more in-depth conversation with you about your habits. Not to say like everyone that uses it needs to go to therapy, but if you do um, use therapy, uh, it's just something that can help it be better. That strikes me that that would be useful for physical health and mental health appointments, that I'm someone who's terrible about that, that I'll go to the doctor and I'll say, you know, I've been feeling badly for a little while. I, you know, I, I've had a headache or I've had this or I've had that. And, uh, you know, and inevitably the question is, when did this start? How long has this been going on? And I don't really know. <laughs> oh, but I'll, I'll, you know, I'll say, I'm so, I don't know, I think seven days. And then, you know, and, but then, then when I go back and actually look at the calendar later, I realize like, oh no, it's been 17 or it's been 19 or like, 
And so having all of that data collected for you, that humans are usually pretty bad at being able to track that kind of thing over time. And so having it available for any of your healthcare providers, whether it's mental health or physical health, or just for yourself, and it sounds like in the longer run too, like that might be something where just even the feedback from the app would help people sort of would flag for people, this is an issue, right? This is something that you've been struggling with consistently. And then they can make that decision of, do they now want to move on to seeking professional help? And then they can use the app yeah. to inform their provider. Yeah, it's definitely, um, on one aspect, it's important to collect all this information, right? It's it's important to do it in a way that's really seamless and uh, uh, you know not intrusive. You know, no one wants to sit there and like tap buttons for you know twenty minutes every day. I mean, it's just not sustainable, right? You're just not going to do that in the long run. Um, but another aspect of it is um, to make sure um, that this stuff is actually useful too. Um, you know, lots of people even wore smartwatches in our interviews, but they stopped. Um, because they simply didn't get anything out of it, right? It did. You know, maybe they'd learned a thing or two about themselves and they were excited for a week, but then... No one. Yeah, they, they don't keep getting that. And so they just, you know, stop doing something that they kind of think already they probably should be doing, but... Yeah, no, I agree. And having all of it integrated would be really nice because I am one of those people. I love data. I love the gadgets. I have, you know, I track my sleep. I track my activities. Yeah. I track my nutrition, but I do it all on different apps. And so knowing how those things are interrelated would be really exactly. helpful. Yeah. We're, I mean, we like this stuff too. I mean, in a certain way, we're building this for ourselves as well. So. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I'm so glad you are, and I look forward to using it, and I look forward to coming back and talking with you again once I've been using it, and we could do part two of this, <laughs> and I'll tell you, tell you what I thought. Okay, that, that great. sounds great. I actually just want to leave, uh, leave you with one anecdote. Um, my friend Christian was using the app, and uh, when I was working on the back end and crunching um, the, numbers the numbers and... Uh, <laughs> and uh, making sure our algorithms work and everything, I actually um, uh, showed him, you know, some of the patterns in the data that now we have automated. Um, but something he didn't even realize is that his uh, average happiness was down considerably since the start of coronavirus. And that's not something that he really thought consciously of. And I feel like that's something that a lot of people don't necessarily, it doesn't come up day to day, right? right. But uh, it's important to to make sure that you kind of understand where you are both physically, because we can quantify physical health very well, right? We can see your weight, um, we can see your blood pressure, but it's in terms of kind of quantifying how you're doing mentally, it's uh, it's a lot harder. And so that's uh, I think uh, another you know mission that we're trying to get behind. Got it. So are you so are. Are you going to be able to see my data? Is my data identifiable? Are you going to come back to me and say, Dr. Vernon, your, you know, your exercise, you've been slacking. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 not at all. Um, I mean, this, this is like one of my best friends. He, he just shared his data with me um, through the system, but uh, no, all the, all the data that we collect is completely anonymous. Um, it's held to the best uh, medical data standards that, you know, exist. We're going really above and beyond to make sure that, uh, everybody um, feels safe using the app. <laughs> we can't read anything that you, you know, write or, or look at your data in any way that, you know, reflects on you. So, I mean, and also part of it is if it's meant to be used or if therapists can um, create questionnaires and surveys for patients and they deliver them through the app and collect data through the app, um, it's just up to HIPAA standards to, just to make sure nobody can see anything. So. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. HIPAA standards are very stringent. So you have, yeah, you've got this to sort of the level of security that are required for medical records, which is exactly good. Well, I am looking forward to using this and I'm looking forward to talking to you both again. Thank you so much. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Our pleasure.